Simply Conscious presents Everyday Genius. Real life stories of everyday genius, unconventional wisdom, and inspiring transformations. Okay, we're live. Hello and welcome to this episode of Everyday Geniuses from Simply Conscious. I'm Pete Craig, and today I'm really excited to welcome um, our first guest. Uh, our first guest, uh, he's a shamanic practitioner um, who has been on this path now for 15 years, and he'll correct me when I bring him in in a second if uh, if I'm wrong, but he's been on this path now for 15 years. Um, he's really kind of dived deeply into this path, and I've invited him onto the show today because I actually believe that what he brings is something that's much, much deeper than just um, an understanding of shamanic practice as you might have perhaps come across it before. Um, he has a unique gift, he's multilingual and uh, uh, has a deep, deep connection with like, Central and South America and believes that you know, there's this work that needs to be done in order to help people integrate the medicine uh, into their lives or into uh, their everyday lives. And that's, that's his gift, that's his unique ability is in actually being able to help people make the most of the medicine and the medicine journey. So, um, you know, please join me in welcoming to today's episode, uh, Mark John Brown. Thank Hello, you very Mark. much, brother. Hello. Thank you. Cool. Uh, lovely to have you here. Likewise. Um, likewise. I, I want to kind of like kick off um, with a process that that we've we've been leaning into ourselves, and um, yeah, invite you to check in. Um, and just share perhaps, you know, what's, what's alive in you right now? You know, what is it that's kind of like really bubbling up inside of you? Cause I know you've been through, and we'll, we'll perhaps dive into this in, in, in a second, but you've been through an amazing journey just in the last couple of months. Yeah. Alone. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so what's alive in me right now? Hmm. I'm really, I feel generally quite calm, um, but there is also a kind of uh, fresh and I guess refreshed um, glimmer of, of excitement um, to be doing this with you, man. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. That's that's what's alive in me, and uh, I will I will correct you. Uh, it it has been just over eleven years that I've been on this on on the shamanic path. Yeah, yeah, but it might as well be fifteen. <laughs> A lot has happened. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's that's what's alive sure. right now. And what's um yeah, uh, I'm sure this is a huge answer because there'll be so much for you. I, ju I know, I just know this. What's life inviting you to experience more of? What's life inviting you into right now? Um, correct order of priorities, uh, the primary of which is presence and family time, um, fatherhood, being a husband, um, really also also a great word a great word selflessness mm -hmm. um and, and 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 the and the art of again correct use and correct order of selflessness mm -hmm. um yeah because i, I know I, I i i'm sure you know that this word selflessness can be in some ways misconstrued and used in some ways to kind of feed an energy of uh, victimization and lack and whatever. But actually, it's a very powerful word when used. And it's a very powerful concept when implemented correctly. Um, and I believe that that's probably, probably the biggest thing that life is, um, apart from the presence and the family time, which actually are all enveloped in this act of selflessness, that is most definitely the primary uh, um, thing that life is inviting me into uh, right now. 
Yeah. Beautiful. And and finally, before we really dive in, um, what are you grateful right now? Grateful for right now? I'm grateful for slowness. Everything slowing down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The perspective that that brings as well. Uh, I think we're we're probably all experiencing that right now at this uh, yeah this time in um, in the world uh, and and across the world. You know, at no other time have, have we all collectively um, been able to have similar experiences at the same time. Um, and yep. all, and we all interpret it differently. So for different people, it means different things. Uh, but yeah, I, slowness, slowing down, it's definitely a, a gift. Um, and I think if you can get beyond uh, the fear that what's happening has, has created, uh, then, yeah, and relax into the slowing down, there's beauty within that. 100%. Yep. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for just sharing that. It's a practice that we're, um, you know, we're moving into ourselves and it's, uh, it's bringing us um, great insights. Um, mm. And it's something that we don't do enough, especially men, you know, yeah. men don't, don't share these kind of inner thoughts enough. And uh, if you ask most men uh, to do that uh, and to do it from the heart and to do it openly, they, <laughs> they run a mile. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, I honor anyone who's, uh, who, who's able to and willing to, to do that. Yeah. Uh, so thank you. Um, so I didn't do any of what you do um, any justice when I introduced you. Uh, so, so take, take a moment and tell us, tell us about your mission, uh, about what it is that, that you do, what it is that you're, you're creating. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, I'm creating a, what I believe I'm creating is a blueprint on earth for, um, and, and when I say this, this by no means, uh, is um, uh, demonstrated demonstrative is that a word it doesn't demonstrate uh, that I'm in any way a master or you know have made it in any way whatsoever but I, I believe that what I'm co-creating is a blueprint on earth for sustainable community living um, first and foremost um, so I, 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 I co-own, co-create and co-run um, Kuichi Yachta, which is the Quechua saying for rainbow community <laughs> or, or, or tribe of many colors, if you want to put it that way. Um, it's a, primarily a, a, a retreat center, um, but it's much more than just a retreat center. It's, uh, it's a community, a sustainable community where we are moving every day more towards living completely uh, sustainably, self-sustainably, so from the land. Um, I also... Uh, just, just just before you move on, um, yeah, <laughs> t- t- tell us where that is. Oh, that's in Urubamba, in Peru's Sacred Valley. Beautiful. So the Sacred Valley town of Urubamba, yeah. Um and apart from this, I work closely with the Quero Nation of, of Peru, which uh, the Quero people are considered to be the last pure blood descendants of the Incas, the ancient Incas of Machu Picchu. Um, and I work very closely, even more closely than the Quero, actually. I work closely with the Shipibo tribe of the Peruvian Amazon. Um, and I am apprentice of um, of the Shipibo tribe and... Uh, I am in the process of, after my 11 years practicing core shamanism, I'm now learning uh, to hold and to hold ayahuasca ceremonies and serve uh, the ayahuasca medicine. I carry this knowledge around the world with me, so um, I, I take my maestros uh, with me uh, around the world and allow um, the world to be infused by their knowledge, their wisdom. Um, and yeah, I, I really um, a big part of this mission is to is to help the Western world to really get the value that they deserve from 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 these plant medicines, you know, um, and and to 
for it not just to be, for them to see the real purpose beneath the surface of just showing up at a plant medicine ceremony and, and really uh, grasping and, and grabbing by the scruff of the neck the huge levels of transformation that uh, are available um, through the ingestion of these uh, sacred plant medicines that these um, ancient lineages of our beautiful earth bring forward for us. Why is it... Um... So you talked a little bit of that there about you know kind of like you know, helping helping Western uh, Western society understand how to integrate this and benefit from this. Um, I want to kind of like just pull back a little bit and, and ask you, yeah, in this age where there are so many people now, kind of like you know practicing shamanism, um, sure. running ayahuasca ceremonies, uh, running other plant medicine ceremonies. Yeah, given that you've you've studied this path, you've trodden this path for. 11 years you know, why is it now uh, only that only now that you're starting to um, be trained or feel ready to learn to administer the the medicine itself and to, to hold that space uh, when so many other people are um, are kind of like yeah are, are rushing into it I guess and uh, um, and proclaiming to be able to hold that space you know what mm. what what's the you know for for you why not why is it taken so long um but you know, there's this there's clearly i i know from conversations we've had before there's a depth of um respect there's a depth of understanding that you know, that you feel towards the plant but also towards you know your your maestros towards you know their lineage and uh, and the space uh, that you need to hold um mm -hmm. why why is that so important yeah well number one is that word that you used is 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 respect um to respect the lineages that, that brought these forward you know um another thing that i do in life is i play didgeridoo and you know i i haven't learned to play from i did not learn from an aboriginal um but every time i pick that didgeridoo up to my mouth uh, I always send thoughts and prayers and gratitude to the Aboriginals out of respect, you know. And um, uh, with ayahuasca and plant medicines, that level of uh, that, that 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 respect it runs on so many different levels because it's not just about respecting a culture and a lineage, but it's also respecting the people who will be ingesting the uh, the plant. And we're talking life altering mind altering life altering substances that uh you know really deserve to 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 be respected uh, to a high 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 level um and it takes a lot of responsibility and integrity to to uh, be able to serve such medicines adequately um, to 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 a to a level of of adequate um, proficiency and um, I guess you could also say professionalism. Um, you know, proficiency is definitely the word. Um, and you know, um, we see we see like mixed martial arts, um, which is uh, a. a uh, a kind of hybrid of many different art forms, but um, mixed martial arts was born from deeply rooted respect in the lineages that all came to the table to create this new form that is mixed martial arts. And um, <clears throat> I believe in evolution. I believe that, you know, um, new whole new lineages and whole new practices can be birthed but the respect and the practicing and the learning and the deepening and the creation of roots within the original lineages cannot be bypassed mm. cannot be bypassed that the, this is the root and if we try to create a plant with no root it's dysfunctional it won't work right um so these lineages these uh, ancestral lineages 
of the Earth's original peoples, they must be respected first and foremost as the place of origin. Um, once we can, once we like master and become proficient in one of these, then cool, we can evolve and we can begin to bring in our own ways and whatever, which is kind of what I'm doing now anyway. You know, I'm at least beginning uh, that, but it's taken me 11 years, man, you know, um, and yeah, that's, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, it does. And I, I just want to just to like drive that point home a little bit more that, you know, this isn't just a, um, plant medicines aren't just something that you, they're not just a tick box, you know, on a, uh, you know, on a list of you know, like, uh, psychedelic drugs that, uh, that you might want to take, you know, there's, there's something a lot deeper than that. And I remember, when you just came back from uh, Peru, you shared with me about the, you know, the dieta that you were put on um, and you know, what that included. So that included other plants um, and other things that you had to ingest and a special diet that you had to ingest in order to prepare yourself so as you could fully experience and benefit from the, the medicine itself, you know, which uh, now I don't know. Um, in the ceremonies I've taken part in, that's, ne that's never happened. Um, mm -hmm. you know, they, they've been conducted by a very kind of well-respected, um, shaman, but that's never been part of, um, you know, the process. And I think that's perhaps the difference between, you know, um, what you might call, you know, ayahuasca and plant medicine tourism and you know, the experience that you get when you're actually working with someone who is, um, for, for who it's their life. Yeah. yeah, and I remember you telling me that your your maestro started drinking at three, six. Is it? Three? Yeah, 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 six. Yeah, six. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And you know uh, what's the saying? Uh, there's a great saying. He he's not a massively intellectual man, you know, but his spiritual capacities are massive, and the he sometimes just comes out with things that just completely land and he came out with this uh thing i mean so many different things that he says to me that just land completely and and this was one of those things he said um your level of mastery uh is only equal to your level of dedication to the practice of dieting <laughs> mm. this is what he said to me um and 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 I can help people to understand this because I under I, I get that it's a little bit like abstract and weird for people to hear. So your level of mastery is only equal to your level of dedication to the practice of dieting. The practice of dieting creates a deep relationship apart from, you know, we're not even thinking about weight loss or, you know, metabolic resets yeah. or whatever, right? We're we're the practice of dieting is like the practice of courtship or human relating in any of its facets. It is a relationship with the plants. And when you are able to dedicate yourself to the plants, um, then they will reward you with a, with a, with a relationship. Mm -hmm. They will reward you with a relationship. And in that relationship, you will be given the gifts of facilitating healing. And I use the word facilitating because we do not heal. The plants and, 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 and the universal energies and the energies of the person heal. We just facilitate the healing. Um, and, and it can also be, we can also draw parallels to like, for example, the world of business where, um, you know, if uh, if I want to be so, let's say our friend Daniel, if I want to be the middleman for, you know, a business deal to go down, an introduction, or, or let's just say a business deal to to go down between us, a joint venture to go down with this, uh, let's just say the owner of a bus company, right? I have a good relationship with him because I have nurtured that relationship over five or six years with him. And it, it only makes sense that the facilitator of that transaction or that piece of business is is me, right? Mm. If you were to do it without even 
maybe you just met him fleetingly and shook his hand one day, right? And didn't dedicate any time, any heart space, any relationship nurturing with him. And you tried to make this deal for Daniel. He'd be like, go away, yeah. you know? Same thing with the healing plants. Same thing with the master plants. Yeah. Um, yeah. Beautiful. So. Beautiful. <laughs> what, um, what lights you up about this? What keeps you, what keeps you on this path? You know, when you know, you've just come back from I don't know, a month, um, six weeks in, uh, in Peru, you were um, brought back as a result of uh, the current situation with COVID-19. Um, so you've come from the expansiveness um, and the, the beauty of, you know, kind of the, uh, the Amazonian jungles back to you know, the, the density and the heaviness of, you know, um, kind of city living in Edinburgh. What what keeps you going in those moments where you, know, you many of us would would just think actually all I want to do is kind of stay under the covers? Yeah, yeah. Um, first and foremost, man, the knowledge of these people, the people with whom I work, my maestros, the Kero people, the Shipibo people, the indigenous people of our planet. Now more than ever in the history of mankind. Man himself needs to have the understanding that these original populations of our world bring. Now more than ever, it is necessary, it is needed. Um, they do not uh, exist to compete or control, compete with or control Mother Nature, but to work in harmony with her. Mm. And that is what the world is crying for now more than ever. Um, so there is that, that like, that is, uh, is a big part of, of, of what I feel every single day. But then there is also just the absolute bliss and pleasure that I receive from allowing people to gain insight into other cultures and especially cultures that have such sacred knowledge for the world in, in such crucial times mm -hmm. that, that keeps you awake. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, so when you when I think about when I think about you and when I think about the connection that you have and the kind of the mission that you've shared with me before, um, what's the impact that you're having uh, and how do you measure that? So the impact, I think. Yeah, you know, globally, but yeah, you know, perhaps perhaps let's talk more about the impact that you're having on you know, the um, the kind of indigenous people. Mm. I think that's that's the important piece is the impact and and how you're giving back and how you're uh, supporting them. Yeah, so what what's the the impact that you have there and how do you measure that impact? Um. So I. I think the primary impact that I that I have in everything that I'm doing is to, uh, I mean, there's many levels, many many levels to it. Uh, you know, the the work that I'm blessed to do with these people, but I think the primary impact is probably helping them to feel valued by a race or a demographic, a race of people and a demographic that has traditionally stamped all over them, crushed them, um, and to, 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 to help them to finally feel like, wow, what I have, my culture has so much to give to the world. Um, but also, I, I feel like um, um, one of my primary tools for doing this is to, is to work ethically with them. Um, so to pay them well, mm. right? Like I pay, I pay my maestros well. Um, and in fact, you know, they're not, they're not, I don't employ their services, I partner with them. So... They are, you know, they're not just my teachers or um, 
uh, people who help the wheels of my business keep moving. They are they are literally, in, in many ways, they are they are they're business partners as well. Uh, and uh, I feel that this is you know in a, in a lot of what I do with my maestros, I just share my profits fifty fifty with them, right? Some yeah. some uh, some elements don't work out like that just because the circumstances of the of of, of the business the, the kind of way that things work just 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 don't permit that to happen. But um, in such circumstances, I always pay them what they want, right? Mm. And and not less. Um, what's, um, what's the impact of that then? So by by you paying them in that way, what's the kind of knock on effect? Because yeah, I know you've uh, you've shared with me before about the uh, um, about the kind of healing centers, about the um, you know the orphanage and all, all of these different things. So by you putting a fair amount back into them, you know, what's the what's the impact beyond you know, that single person? Yeah, so I mean, the primary impact that it, that that comes forth to to my mind is that I set an example, right? First and foremost, I set an example in the world for indigenous reciprocity, um, um, which kind of, you know, once we reach a kind of, a a certain level of like service and excellence and everything that we do for the wider modern world, we're really going to be setting the benchmark in terms of, you know, uh, reciprocating um, funds and income and and wealth. but also, you know, we, uh, it brings it, it so much empowerment for, for, for the indigenous people. Um, so, you know, at this current moment in time, um, my, my ayahuasca maestros, my ayahuasca shamans, they, are, they don't have their own centers, right? But that's going to change because of what we are doing. Yeah. Right. Like they're going to have their own center because of working with me. Um, and that's a massive thing. You know, that's a great sense of honor for them is to become independent, Yeah, you know, and to have their own place. Uh, and then for them to be able to provide a space for other people to do the same. Mm. Right. Um, so, yeah, uh, I hope that speaks to the knock on effect that we're creating yeah yeah for sure for sure and i think um yeah man, I, I guess it's it's redressing that balance isn't it you know and i think part of uh, part of what i see your genius being you know is this ability to like see how uh see what needs to happen you know, see that there needs to be this um redressing of balance between mm. the the knowledge and the wisdom of the indigenous tribes on the one hand and then the you know, the needs of Western society, yeah, you know, as we mm. like go out of out of balance, both mentally, physically, and you know, spiritually, um, you know, bringing bringing those things back in to allow us on the West to um, to rebalance, <clears throat> but without the need to exploit, which is you know what's happened in the past for centuries and centuries. You know, those uh, those things have been taken. Um, uh, they've been exploited, and I think your your gift is the ability to kind of strike the balance between uh, between those two things and make it fair, make it even, and help Western society understand, um, yeah, you know, the true and see the true value in what they bring, you know, far more yeah. than just you know what uh, what many Westerners see as a as a hallucinogenic you know, kind of like drug or yeah you know, access to. Um, yeah, lands and plants that are available for um, yeah, for for growing industry in the in the West. Yep. No. Yep. Uh, yeah. No. Absolutely. What's um. What What do you feel is unique about your the way you do things? What What's unique about you when there's so many other um kind of like, shaman western shaman people who have studied in a similar way to you with uh you know with indigenous you know tribes with maestros of you know, perhaps a similar similar lineage you know, what's what's unique to you what is it that you bring that is completely and uniquely you 
Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, communication and the access, the level of depth that I give people, the depth of insight and understanding. I it is it is in my DNA to help people to understand, uh, to be the bridge between cultures and between worlds and cosmologies and philosophies and schools of thought to be the bridge to help uh, be a kind of uh, interpreter, uh, mediator, middleman. Um, and, and it just it completely lights me up, man. It, it is, you know, Fantastic. I do it so naturally. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and yeah, so that's 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 first and foremost, that's uh, something that's very unique with me. It is like it's something that I'm so deeply passionate about is to just help people to understand, to break down all cultural, intercultural misconceptions and barriers and to help each other, each, you know, each side of the coin come together in harmony and unison and, and understanding mm-hmm. of, of each other. Um, yeah. That's my most unique thing, I think. Yeah, I, I have to say, you know, I'd, I'd agree one hundred percent. Yeah, I think, I, I think the gift that you bring more than anything else, or the, or the uniqueness, is just your a your ability to speak those languages, but also your your desire, uh, your longing to kind of really understand. You know, it's not just about understanding, you know, Spanish. It's about understanding the the nuances of you know, the specific tribal languages and then um, being able to interpret that for people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as you can, so as people get the real experience Mm -hmm. um, rather than just sitting in front of or sitting in ceremony with someone who uh, is speaking a foreign language and perhaps being able to pick up one or two words, actually being able to like communicate, not just the word, but also the, the intent, the sentiment, the feeling that the, that the shaman is brings to that word, the life that they bring to that word. Um, yeah. yeah, that yeah, that I think is what's what's truly unique about um, you. Yeah, just helping them to see through each other's eyes mm. and to, and to experience the world through each other's, you know, worlds yeah. own little yeah, um, yep. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you a question now, and this is yeah, you know, um, I think I know some of the answers, but um, you know, to share them, yeah. You know, can you recall you know, specific moments of transformation or awakening you know, for yourself? Uh, because I know, you know it's although you've trodden this path for eleven years, uh, there there was a period uh, of your life where you were you succumb you succumb to what we all do. Yeah, which is you know, much more material, <clears throat> kind of like desires, um, you know, beliefs around what you should be doing, how you should be doing it, who you should be doing it with. Um, mm. yeah, so what, you know, is there a specific moment when you know, that really landed for you and you, you kind of felt pulled back to you know, what in your heart you, you know you were born to do? Um, I think probably, I mean, uh... You know, 2019 brought a lot of that, right? Brought a hell of a lot of that. Um, like I was, I was down in London, ready, get prepping to ho- co-host a men's circle, and then, you know, my my co-host Amit showed me a video that moved a hell of a lot of energy for me, um, and you know. Um, only a couple of months later, I was um, down in the jungle of Peru, drinking the medicine and having all sorts of insights and understandings about my, you know, uh, how, how like how narcissistic I had become or I had allowed myself to become and how um, kind of uh, self, I guess, self-centered and self um, without even uh, meaning it, of course, um, just becoming so absorbed in this kind of like self-serving way of being um that happened you know but in between those two moments in between being shown that video 
in London before I was co-hosting a men's circle and being in the jungle in Peru, having all these understandings about who I'd allowed myself to become and who I actually really in the depth of my being want to show up as in this world, which I will not reveal right now. Um, that's sacred information only, only for me. I haven't even told my wife that one. Um, in between those two moments came a retreat in Mexico, uh, a plant medicine retreat in Mexico. And in, at that retreat, I was able to experience in its uh, fullest with no, no responsibilities or onus upon me necessarily, but just to be able to freely, openly, um, yeah, explore this uh, thing that is me taking up that role as the bridge between the cultures and being in a large circle of people, probably around, I don't know, 30 people in total, all drinking medicines, t taking plant medicines um, with me helping them gain understanding and insight into the indigenous cultures that were present uh, at, at that retreat. Um, it completely lit me up and it almost like almost like a drug right almost like you know it screamed at me like this is what you are supposed to be doing you know and the feeling of just that lit feeling of total bliss and ecstasy like you know that's all i want to be doing in life really and was that would would you say that was so so that was kind of like a I guess a um, a signpost how how easy was it then to uh, to follow because because you know quite often we have those feelings with ourselves where we know something's right um, and we have this kind of like gut feeling you know it's like our inner guidance system telling us that this is the path we should be should be following um, how easy was it then. Uh, or what challenges did you find in actually kind of like, you know, then staying on that path, following that path? What, what were the, were there, were there particular, particularly hard decisions that you had to make or, um, you know, particularly challenging, um, you know, obstacles, past beliefs that you had to overcome, you know, masks that you had to drop in order to follow that path in order to just, you know, trust wholly your, your heart that this was the path you were meant to be following? Um, in some ways, I guess you could say, yes, I mean, <clears throat> I, because I was still very much um, involved in circles of people who were embodying the energy which I was currently shedding, and, and it's very easy to fall into old habits and old ways of thinking and old ways of being, um, and so, yeah, I found myself, like, I mean, it, the day after I came back from that retreat, you know, I opened another company, hmm. right? And um, and it never took me very long. Well, well, down in down in the jungle in Peru is where this understanding came. That wow, I'm just I'm I'm just doing the same as before, but putting a bit of a spiritual mask on it, right? Um, uh, so essentially, I was doing the I was acting from the exact same place as I had been throughout my whole kind of entrepreneurial and business journey, only I was justifying it by yeah. putting the spiritual mask on it, right? Um, so I had to shed that, and um, that wasn't too easy, man. Um, and I think um, uh, what helped me to move further into the space I'm kind of embodying now was another tough decision, which was to move, to emigrate uh, back to Peru and to take up citizenship in Peru, which involved leaving my wife and my daughter behind in Edinburgh so that I could kind of spread my wings, take flight and find a place to put our new nest, essentially, and begin to lay the foundations. Um, in making that difficult decision, um, 
obviously I, I came, that's when I, around about the time of making that decision is when I came into partnership with the people with whom I'm now creating uh, Koichi Yachta, the community. Um, and, and in moving into partnership with those people and beginning to build this sustainable community in Urubamba, Peru, um, that's when whew, that pattern really began to shed mm. from me. Um, yeah, uh, I really found myself just really beginning to sit in the cradle of my being, being present, really uh, giving you know all of my trust to the universe, to Great Spirit, and um, and really just surrendering to whatever my bliss was telling me, like just following the scent trail or the breadcrumbs of my bliss with no fear of where next month's income is going to come from, you know, um, or any of those things that we worry about a lot of the time. Yeah, so yeah, yeah I guess it's almost like, um, yeah, it is having just, it's having to have trust, you know, and, and belief yeah, and taking that leap of faith, but perhaps you know, knowing, and, and perhaps this is a lesson for everyone. You know, is uh, um, the worst that can happen. Yeah, is is not actually as bad as as we think it is because it's just a construct of construct of yeah you know, the mind, um, and typically you know, those things aren't ever as bad as we think they are. Um, and yeah. you know, magic lies beyond those those beliefs yeah and and I, th yep. I think that's yeah that's the piece that you found you know by finding you know the, the wake up initially was uh, was the realization that that was the path and you know then you had to kind of like develop and cultivate that that trust in order to in order to follow it but in order to do that you had to kind of like strip back some some masks and some beliefs and let go of some um you know what are in essence just man-made um you know constructs you know that sadly we all we all kind of like fall into and we all kind of like you know, then live our lives by um yeah often as a result losing our connection to our yeah our inner wisdom and our connection to yeah our own genius yeah it's only when we yep. can it's only when we connect back with with joy you know that we can be creative and absolutely uh, uh, I read a quote yesterday, which I really love, and that's that uh, from our Albert Einstein. And he says, creativity is intelligence having fun. Mm -hmm. you know? ah, I think I saw you sharing yeah. that, actually. And, you know, I think that's a, that's a, it's a beautiful kind of like, you know, um, description yep. of yep. how we should live life. You know, we yep. should live life in a state of, um, you know, we're creative, human, we're creative, um, yeah. In our essence, we are creators, um, yep. but we've lost yep. the ability to create because we no longer have fun. Yeah, yep. and we've kind of like, we've we've wrapped up this idea that you know, to be intelligent means to um, to brush aside yeah you know, the lightness, the joy, and the the fun side of who we are. You know, when yep. the reality is, it's you know by bringing those things in. Yeah, that we become our most intelligent, that we become our most creative, and that we develop solutions um, you know, that allow us, um, that allow the world to be a better place. Yep, absolutely. And that level of joy, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that level of joy, lightness, fun, it comes from no other place than right here, right now. Mm presence yeah. um and and right here right now there is no worry of next month's cash flow or that business deal or what that person thinks of us or was that about me or you know all the crap that runs through our heads yeah it is all right here right now yeah um yeah, yeah. awesome right I, i'm going to challenge you now um because i'm going to ask you to share something um that you've never shared before Share something that you've never shared on a podcast. Share something that you've never um, you've never shared publicly. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, it can be about you. It can be about a belief that you've got. Yeah, whatever it is. Um... Yeah. Okay. 
something that you actually, because you're a friend and, um, you know, we've known each other for a, for a few years now, you know, um, but I've never spoken about this publicly. Um, and not everybody knows this about me. So, <laughs> uh, the root of my language capacity and skills and the reason that I speak such a high level of almost native level uh, Spanish is because of the two best friends that I uh, had in uh, early, well, from the age of 11, uh, all through my teenage years, moving into my adult life, uh, who were from Argentina and Paraguay in South America. Um, but one of my biggest sources of pain in my adult life pain and also insecurity um yeah is the fact that um when i was out in south america and I, and i and i chose to um in a very wild way i guess um get married on my 20th birthday to the woman who is still my wife now all these years later 11 years later um um when that happened, those two friends just decided to cut me off and, and stop talking to me. Um, and that in itself um, has been probably my biggest source of pain and insecurity in, in or, or at least one of my biggest sources of pain and insecurity in my in my adult life um, to have this tremendous capacity that I've that I've developed I mean I, I, I'm not going to play it small and play it down because it, it it truly is you know massive like what what I've what I've built in in the world of language and communication um to have this and then to have you know the root of that unavailable mm. to 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 show to the world yeah um it's not been an, 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 an easy thing for me. So, uh, yeah, that's the first time I've ever shared mm. that on a podcast or anywhere in public. Uh, well, th thank you for sharing that. I yeah, truly honor that and I appreciate you. Um, you, uh, you being vulnerable in that way and, uh, and sharing with, uh, with everyone. What it does highlight to me is, is something, something really important that we forgot to talk about and uh, that I think people should know. In, and that's that if one of your many like achievements it was the language school and the language interpretation business that that you created yeah so i mean just recap recap on that for me because that yeah that that's no that's no mean feat you know that's uh yeah so we i mean it, ex it exploded pretty quickly um and you know it was quite a uh yeah, quite a feat. I mean, in the space of five months, we built a team of 270 uh, freelance language professionals all over the world, servicing uh, the development of a uh, voice recognition technology for one of the world's absolute giants, tech giants, you know, um, as big as, you know, any company <laughs> out there. Um you know, one of the very biggest, our end client was one of the biggest uh, tech giants. Um, and yeah, so we were, we built from, from, from scratch in the space of five months, 270 freelance workers servicing that uh, assignment in eight different languages. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty, it was a, a wild, wild, uh, a wild ride. You know, uh, I also kind of set the foundations from that, from that platform. I set the foundations to um, salvage the world's uh, endangered indigenous languages by using the same technology and method um, for developing this um, voice recognition technology uh, to um, make kind of digital archives of, of all these languages. Um, yeah, so that was one of the uh, amazing I many I many things. Well. I, I, I remember <laughs> yeah. that time. <laughs> crazy, crazy, wild ride. Uh, amazing, amazing. Um, 
Words of wisdom. As you kind of look back on what you've learned, you know, are there words of wisdom that uh, that you feel compelled to share? Um, you know, that you think would stand anyone in good stead? I just, I always, you know, I always, um, I have been asked this before. Um, and the thing that constantly, like always, the first thing that comes to me every single time I think about this is, it is all going to be okay. It is all yeah. going to be fine. You know, um, that is the primary thing. Um, I, I have a caretaking, protecting, um, safety providing, uh, energy, let's just say energetic blueprint. And, and that is what I want everybody in the world to know is that everything is all right, man. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, You've probably answered this one before at some point as well, or you've been asked this one before. Um, when you when you look back to your younger self, um, knowing what you know now, is there a piece of advice that you would, uh, or a piece of uh, piece of guidance that you would give to yourself? I would say that exact thing to myself yeah. that it's all going to be okay. Oh. It is all going to be okay, and to all the kids. And all the teenagers and all the all the all the youngsters that are worrying, man, it's all going to be okay. Hmm. It's all going to be perfectly okay, you know. Yeah. Um, follow what makes you happy. Find what makes you happy, and follow it. And if you haven't found what makes you happy, then don't fucking stop until <laughs> you find it. You know, yeah. keep going until you find what literally makes your heart burn. And then never stop doing it. Mm. Beautiful, mm. great, great piece of advice. Absolutely, I think uh, yeah. Too often, too often, we lose sight of that thing, that spark that we have when we're children, and uh, yeah, we let life get in the way. Uh, and yeah, and you know that leads to people um, living a life of regret. And yeah, I think uh, you know this. This study's been done before, and they've asked people on their deathbeds, you know, what's the biggest thing uh, that they regret, and it's always the things that they didn't do. Um, yeah. You know, so find your find your passion and uh, and follow it unapologetically. Yeah. You know, there, Absolutely. There is no one apart from you uh, who can judge you. Yep. So yeah, follow your heart and do what's uh, do what lights you up. Absolutely. Um, just before we sign off, um, mm -hmm. it's been amazing to talk to you uh, as always, uh, and thank you for sharing everything that you have shared. But just before you go, I just want to ask you from the 10 ways to access your inner wisdom and ignite yep. your own genius, which is the, uh, uh, the free report that Daniel and I put together as a part of Simply Conscious. Um, what's your favorite or two favorite of those? What are the things that resonate the most with you and, and perhaps have been staples of your own, your own practice? So I've got this, uh, these 10 ways in front of me and number one, is my number one uh, slow down um, I think I was having a conversation with you recently that uh, you know uh, I asked the question I asked the question just how much of these daily routines time blocking structure driven practices that we have in life just how much of that is to mask the levels of underlying insanity mm. that is there for us. And if we just stopped doing a few of them, you know, like, like how, just how insane might we feel, you know? So slow down, break it all down and bring it back to basics, breath and earth, slow it right down. Um, and the next uh, one for me is definitely feel all emotions. And I know um, that you, my man, have been to at least one of the men's circles that I uh, uh, co-host yeah. um, where we definitely touch upon that, um, especially for us men. You know, it's it's a big one for, for, for us men is to feel, you know, um, 
And hey, if you think that you maybe don't quite know how to feel and are maybe a little bit numb, then come and drink some plant medicine with me, man. Because uh, plant medicine certainly help us to feel, you know, and it's what everybody need, needs. We don't need to close off emotions. We don't need to ignore emotions. We don't need to pretend that we're not feeling things or play them down or anything. We just need to feel them, you know. Um, and sometimes slowing down and just being with ourselves, our breath and the earth helps us to feel. So, yeah, those are my two favorite from, from the list. Slow down and feel all things, feel all emotions and feelings. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Mark John. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. Um, and we'll put some links uh, underneath uh, the recording so people can contact you directly and find out a little bit more about what it is that you do uh, and a little bit more about you know, your genius um, because you certainly mm -hmm. have many. Um, mm -hmm. But I think yeah, it's important that people can connect with you. And if people feel called, uh, I think this is the important thing. If people feel called to the medicine, um, then yeah, there's no one I would uh, recommend more than them to touch base with you first and foremost, if for no other reason, just to understand what it is that's going to happen and what they should be looking for, whether they um, whether they decide to um, you know journey with you or with one of your maestros or with someone else. I think it's important that you have some guidance as to what it is that you're looking for, questions to ask to make sure that you're going to have the very best and the safest um, and the most transformational experience. Always here for anybody that wants to reach out. So please don't hesitate in doing so. Fantastic. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. For more real life stories of everyday genius, unconventional wisdom and inspiring transformations, subscribe to our podcast or go to simplyconscious.com. Get more out of life.